Hello, welcome to this video where we introduce the concept of how to integrate powers of trig functions. I guess it could also be called just trig integrals. And I have a series of videos. This is the first in the series. And overall, what we're discussing is three different categories, basically. We're talking about how to integrate when you have sine and cosine raised to a power. How to integrate when you have tangent and secant raised to a power. And then the last doesn't really fit in the whole powers category, but how to integrate a product of sine and cosine or two products, uh, a product of cosine with another cosine where there's multipliers on the angles. And perhaps we want those multipliers not to be the same because then it would fit up in a different category. So this first video is going to look at bullet point number one, the concept behind how it works, what you should be looking for. What about the exponents going to tell you how to um, attack the problem? So this next slide we're going to go over is just pure concept. And then I think if we'll have time, we'll try to fit a video in in under 10 minutes. Let's see what happens. So we're looking at sine and cosine as a product raised to powers inside of an integral, trying to find the antiderivative, positive integer powers. Okay. So the method of integrating these types of functions is built off of the exponents. The first thing you should look for is if there is an odd power present um, and, and an odd number that's greater than one. We'll deal with when, when we have a, a power of one uh, later on down the line. But first thing I want you to look for is if there is an odd power present on one of them, on both of them, just any kind of odd power. I have m as the, co um, the exponent on cosine. I have n as the exponent on sine. But either one of them or both of them somehow involving an odd number greater than one. So three or above. Here's how you attack it. Your job should be to factor out one power from that odd power. Now, when you have an odd number, anything odd, when you take out one power, what happens then is that you'll be left with an, an even power left over. Um, if it happens to be that they're both odd, that's okay. Just pick one and factor out. Now, you're not doing anything. Just You're just rewriting the product. Okay. Upon doing that, what happens then is you'll have these even powers remaining. Say your power is three and you take off one, and you're left with two. If your power is five, you take off one, you're left with four. Now, here's what you need to do with those, the rest of those powers that you have left over. There's a Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And your job should be to use that identity to trade in the one trig function for the other. Okay. And so at that point, then the problem becomes much simpler. You can turn it into a U substitution problem. All right. That's the overview of the method. If there's an odd power present. Okay. Now, if there's no odd power present, if there's only an even power or maybe multiple, both of them have even powers available. Um, maybe there's only one, one function, you know, the, both the functions don't have to be there, but, um, if there's no odd power present and there's, there's only even powers present, then it becomes a simpler concept. Then you have to go through those steps above totally different concept, wipe that all away and do something else. The something else is using the half angle identities. Replace all those even powers with these two identities. If you have a sine squared, you're going to replace that with one half the quantity of one minus the cosine of two X. If you have a cosine squared, you're going to replace that with one half the quantity of one plus the cosine of two X. And if it's to the fourth power or six, that's okay. You have this and then it, you can then treat that as then being raised to the two or raised to the three. That would take you to the fourth and the sixth power. Okay. And then just keep, uh, keep doing that until you get it down to a level where you can all, you know, where you can integrate each piece. If along the way you happen to pick up an odd power, then you move above and you handle it that way. All right, great. So then the only thing left then is if the, uh, one of them has a, a power of one, or maybe both of them has a power of one. And that's the easiest of all cases. I probably should have started with that one. That's what, uh, with that one, you just do a U sub. You let U be the one that isn't, um, the one that's raised to the pow power of one. And then it all works out nicely and there's no complications to it at all, really. All right. So that's the method. 
you decide on what you do based on the presence or absence of an odd power greater than one. Okay. All right, great. Let's see an example of letter A where we have an odd power present that's greater than one. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're good. Okay. So here's my example. Uh, I call it example one. I have cosine who's raised to the fifth and sine who's squared. There's an odd power present. Cosine is raised to the fifth. According to the method, I need to take away, well not take away, but sort of factor out, not out of the integral, but just put, put aside cosine x and leave those four cosine x still there. The sine squared don't do anything to it. Okay. Rewrite cosine fifth as cosine fourth times cosine. Now what you need to do with those, the rest of those powers of cosine, you need to convert them. See, cosine squared is one minus sine squared. So you're gonna convert those fourth, the four powers of cosine that are left over using that identity. Replace cosine squared with one minus sine squared. Now you have cosine fourth, which is cosine squared squared. So just replace it with one minus sine squared quantity squared. Don't multiply it out, leave it exactly as it is. I have the cosine that I factored out in step one written in red. Here's why. It's on purpose that I want to change the color for you. I want you to know the reason why you do step one is so that you can do a U sub. You are factoring out that piece, that term, so it can be part of du. I like to put it at the end of the integral, right next to the dx. And so du is going to be cosine x dx in our U sub. Okay, and then that informs you what to let u equal. Since you did the factoring out for cosine, the other trick function, sine, is what you let u equal. Let u equal the sine of x. Because why? Well, its derivative is cosine x dx. And so, um, let's not, don't forget though, you still have two powers of sine in there. Let's put this all back together. So we have the integral, it's an indefinite integral, cosine fifth sine squared. And we see now how to replace cosine fifth with the blue and the red there. And the blue is raised to the second power, okay? But you still had those two powers of sine. They're there in, um, in black. Okay. All I did was replace cosine fifth with the red and the blue. Okay. Have the integration sign still there. And now we're in U sub world. Let's let U equal sine X. Because DU will be cosine X DX. So that piece at the end there will be DU. What about the other terms? Well, since U is sine X, then it simplifies to be simply u squared for the piece that's in black there the term that's in black is u squared in parentheses we have one minus u squared and that parentheses is squared and nice a nice simple integral to do it might not look like it in its current format but it's just a polynomial go ahead and square out the one minus u squared take one minus u squared times one minus u squared and foil that out you'll have one minus two of those u squared plus u to the fourth Go ahead and distribute that u squared into that. And you'll see you have a polynomial integral. We love polynomial integrals. Polynomial integrals are great. Integrating a polynomial is one of the easiest things you can do. And so here we go, u squared minus two u fourth plus u sixth. Integrating a polynomial is the power rule in reverse. You're just adding one to the exponent and dividing by the same thing. So here we go, we'll get u to the three over three minus two to the u to the five over five, plus u to the seven over seven. It was an indefinite integral, so we should throw a plus c on there. We're feeling like we're done. We wanna walk away, but we can't. Why can't we? Uh, the integral came to us in terms of x. We can't give this answer, this antiderivative, in terms of u. We have to give the antiderivative back in terms of x. So just go sub back in. Replace all those u's with the sine of x. And you did it, you did a difficult question. One third the sine cubed on x, um, two fifths the sine fifth of x, and one seventh the sine seventh of x, plus a c. Okay, if there's an i power present, this is your attack. Factor out one, make that part of du, convert the even remaining powers using the Pythagorean identity, and then do a u sub, and you'll have a polynomial integral to integrate. All right, let's go ahead and stop the video here. If you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask. I'm here to help. Um, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll have 
the examples of the other types.